All right, MMA fans, I'm here with multiple time BJJ champion, Mr. Mikey Muzumichi. Hello, sir. How are you today? Good. How are you doing? I'm fine as well. Thanks for asking. Listen, are you still in uh, Las Vegas right now? I know that you just visited Syndicate MMA. Yes, I'm still in Las Vegas. I go back to Singapore next Friday. Okay, very, very nice. So you'll be staying there in Vegas for the upcoming week? Yes, um, I did my preparation here in Vegas the last two months before my match in one championship. And then I'll be going back to Singapore for the next six months. With uh, whom have you been uh, preparing this match? Uh, my preparation for this match is always the same. You know, I train with all my friends in Las Vegas. Um, I train a lot with my sister, uh, Tammy Musumichi, in my garage. And then I'll train at two gyms here named FTCC with Ninja and then Jiu-Jitsu Methods with Rene. Those are the, all three places I train. Um, that, that's good to hear. Uh, listen, you made your one championship debut back in April and you submitted Japanese grappling legend Masakazu Imanari via rear naked choke. Were you expecting such a quick victory on that occasion? Uh, I didn't really know what to expect, sir, you know, fighting such a legend like Imanari. I just knew that I felt I had a few openings I could do, and I was able to capitalize on them, and then I was able to get to the back, and I was able to finish, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I saw that fight, that match. It was quite entertaining. Was there anything your opponent did that surprised you on that occasion? Yeah, Imanari's footlocks were so strong. <laughs> My foot was dying. <laughs> You know, I'm very flexible, but, um, and my game plan in the match was to actually give my foot because I knew I could eventually take his back from that spot, but I didn't realize how amazing his footlock would be, you know, so it was really painful, but um, I knew how to shut off the footlock enough where the pressure wasn't enough to take my foot off my body. So I could eventually get to his back and finish the match. He's such a legend though in Minori. I have so much respect and admiration for him. Um, how was it for you to compete for the first time inside the circle? And was that the first time you actually, uh, you know, competed inside the a cage? A cage, yes. So the experience was horrifying and really cool at the same time, you know. Being a jiu-jitsu person, we're used to fighting in a gymnasium, like a high school gymnasium, like very small, you know, and then going into fighting into a cage in front of so many people, like, Definitely was a new experience for me, and I'm a very introvert person, so um, it was horrifying, but I love it, you know. Whenever I feel um, uncomfortable and horrified, like, I have this weird part of me that always pushes me to do it more and more, you know. So right after doing it, I was like, when are we doing it again? You know, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and the next time you'll be competing inside the circle, it will be on October the 1st. You're scheduled to take on Kleber Souza at one on Prime Video 2 for the inaugural Flyweight Submission Grappling Championship. What's your opponent's biggest flow in your opinion? Um, I don't really pay attention to my opponent, honestly. Um, I see all my opponents the same. Um, I'm one of those guys that doesn't really focus on their opponent. I just focus on myself, you know. I just been focusing on in training, attacking every second and making it very hard for my partner to defend my attacks, you know. So Kleber is a very tough opponent. I have a lot of respect for him, like I do for all my opponents. But I believe that the way I'm training, I'll be able to eventually submit him, you know. Um, I train so hard every day. And um, again, my game is based on sequences. I go one, then the person defends. Then I do a second one, then the person defends. I have like 30 sequences like this. So it takes a lot for your partner to be able to defend all 30 attacks at once. You know what I mean? So my goal in this match is to make it where I'm just attacking my partner every second and to eventually, when my partner is defending each of my attacks, I eventually get the attack that works, you know? Um, and I see myself being able to do that. Again, um, he might throw some things out me that I'm not expecting and we'll see it. You know, if I, if I don't, if I'm not able to get the position, there's a reason why, then I'll go back and fix it. That's why I compete the biggest reason. Because when I compete with the top guys, they give me reactions that I might have never seen before. And then it gives me new feedback that I have to fix for my jiu-jitsu. My whole goal of competing is to make my jiu-jitsu the best it could be, you know. So the only way I could do that 
And the, the most painful way to do that is competing with the best guys. And then they help me improve my jiu-jitsu. So we'll see how this match goes, you know, but I feel very confident that my training was sufficient. You know, it won all my world titles in Las Vegas where I'm training with all my friends. So I did the exact training I did for all of those. And I feel very good going into this. Yeah, I, I really appreciated your answer. And I really like the way you put your offensive and also your, your game plan. You know, you break, broke it down into sequences. That's quite interesting. And I'm really looking forward to watching you in, in action on October the 1st. Thank you so much. Um, listen, more and more BJJ champions are transitioning to MMA. Uh, you did that seminario, seminar sorry, in, at Syndicate MMA with uh, Marcus uh, Almeida Bouchesha. Uh, yes. Have you considering doing that? Uh, mixed martial arts? Uh, I don't know. Not right now. I don't really have any aspirations to do MMA. Um, I'm more focused on helping jiu-jitsu become mainstream where jiu-jitsu people don't have to go to MMA to make money, you know? What one championship is giving us jiu-jitsu people is a platform where back in the day, what it would be is if you wanted to make money, you would have to switch from jiu-jitsu to MMA. Mm -hmm. But now one championship is on the same platform as MMA. So one championship has MMA and jiu-jitsu is on the same platform as MMA is what I meant to say. And that's going to enable us jiu-jitsu people to make money like MMA fighters are. So I don't have to have brain damage and I can make the same money as an MMA fighter, you know? So that is amazing to me. And it's up to us current jiu-jitsu fighters to enable the next generation to have this, you know, because we have to make it stay on the platform of one championship. And by us having exciting matches where viewers outside of jiu-jitsu could see it's not boring, like kickboxing, Muay Thai, MMA fans, it will enable uh, us to stay on this platform, you know, and it's our responsibility to make it exciting. So I feel a lot of pressure in this match and the match before and every match I have because I have to make these matches exciting so it stays on this platform one championship. Um, one championship also promotes a lot of crossover fights. You know, we saw some, uh, a recent mix. Uh, sorry, a recent mixed uh, custom rule fight. Uh, is there any fighter, MMA fighter in general, you like to face in a submission grappling match? Yes, Mighty Mouse. That would, uh, he's, my, he's my favorite MMA fighter. I'm a big fan of him and I'm also friends with him. I think he's amazing. But the biggest reason would be is we would be able to spread jiu-jitsu to the most audience ever if we did this match, you know. Uh, we would make it special rules, of course, maybe no uh, leg locks or anything like that to make it more fair for him. But um, it would just like, for example, my last match with Minari had 25 million views. I believe if I fought Mighty Mouse, we could get over 100 million views with people watching. So we would spread jujitsu jiu to the so many more people, which is what our goal is now. That's, that's my main goal right now. Competing. I want all the titles I wanted to in jujitsu. Um, Besides the one belt, that's my next goal in two weeks. But after that, my goal is to just spread jiu-jitsu as much as I can and to get as many people watching jiu-jitsu and possibly to train jiu-jitsu as I can. That's a, a good quest indeed and, you know, a good, a good plan. Um, Lisa, are you guys working out to a song before submission grappling matches? Uh, yeah, they have walkout songs, yes. Uh, if so, have you already picked yours? Um, I haven't yet, but the last match I did, I walked out to Bon Jovi because um, he's from New Jersey. You know, I was born and raised in New Jersey, so um, that's like my favorite, um, just representing where I'm from, you know. But um, I don't know what I'll walk out to this match. It's, it's whatever mood I'm in. We'll see. <laughs> Speaking of your origins, where does your cool nickname, Darth Rigatoni, come from? <laughs> it, it comes from me being a crazy um pasta pizza nerd you know um i all i eat is pizza and pasta every day and um since i was a kid my parents couldn't really get me to eat anything except pasta and pizza so <laughs> i'm it's me you know and then when i compete everyone says i transform from being this nice smiley guy to like this machine robot so um i got the nickname darth 
rigatoni because I, it's like a transformation of me being like the nice guy to like uh, in this dark world, you know? <laughs> What's your favorite pizza topping? No toppings. No the, top real, the, real, the, real, the real Italians don't put toppings, you know? Pepperoni is okay, but um, I don't believe in toppings. Just basil. Basil doesn't really count as a topping though, but I love basil. That sounds good. Uh, Lisa, Mikey, do you have any last messages? No, um, I just hope you guys tune into my match on September 30th, October 1st in Singapore on one championship. I'm fighting for the belt, the first belt ever in Jiu-Jitsu history. And I promise this match will be super exciting and everyone can enjoy it regardless if you watch Jiu-Jitsu or not. Thank you very much. Best of luck with your upcoming fight and hopefully I'll hear again from you in the future, man. Thank you so much, sir. Have a nice day. You too. Bye-bye.